Hey everybody, it's Peter and this is going to be an exciting one because this is my first review of a snowmobile. Now if you've tuned into this channel before, you know I review motorcycles as much as I can. I do side-by-sides, ATVs, all kinds of vehicles, electric vehicles, gas vehicles, everything. But this one is going to be interesting to me and I'll have to admit, because I haven't reviewed a lot of snowmobiles yet, there's things I don't know. But I'm filming here at Torque, Extreme Torque Motorsports here in New Brunswick and this is the Fredericton location and I can tell you that if you have any questions about this thing that I don't get to in this video, they will fill me in and I will make sure that I come back to your questions and comments in the comments section, but also in future videos. Now, because this is my first snowmobile video, I am gonna ask for one big question that I don't usually ask for. Do me a favor and help me spread this video out amongst the snowmobile crowd. So give it a like, give it a share, uh, add a comment, maybe encourage me a little bit. And like I said, the more we can get this video to take off and then the ones that I do in the next few days, the more access I'll have to do better and better snowmobile videos for you guys. My whole goal of this is to tell you what these units are all about, but not just sort of read the spec sheet, but to really make sense of what those specs mean for you as a rider. And I'm starting with this one right here. This one's really cool. So this is the Skidoo Expedition SE. It's got the Rotax engine, but it's got a 900 Turbo R. So the Ace engine, the 900 Turbo R, it's a three-cylinder engine. It's used in things like the Can-Am, Riker, and that kind of thing. It's used in even things uh, with Rotax uses them, even in like ultralight airplanes. So it's a really popular engine. We're gonna talk engines and specs and everything else. So let's get going with this review. So before we go too far, I like to kind of make sense of how these classes are between the different types of snowmobiles. And this one I like to refer to as a lot like an adventure bike. An adventure bike in the motorcycle world is something that can really go anywhere, but it's really designed for touring as the primary objective. And this is a lot like that. It's really designed to go anywhere. Whether you ride on groomed trails or you know fresh powder, whatever it is you want to do, whether you need to work and carry gear and luggage and even a trailer or a sled behind, you can do that with this unit. You can take a passenger in comfort. So it's a really, really versatile machine. And those are the kinds of machines that I happen to like reviewing a lot. Now what's different than this than the average adventure bike is there's actually four engines. And you're gonna see me use my cheat sheet a few times here. So let's talk about the four engines of this one. To me, this is the top of the line engine, but to you, you may have a different view of what top of the line means to you. It's not quite as simple as like a car engine where one doesn't make as much power and one makes more power and therefore one's the base engine, one's the big engine it's a little bit different in snowmobiles so first of all this one here like I said is the 900 turbo R but let's start where a lot of people are going to start which is the uh, two-stroke engine the rest of them are four stroke but there's a two-stroke engine in this which is an 850 cc so technically that's the least amount of uh, cubic centimeters the least amount of displacement in the engine and that because it's a two-stroke makes hundred and sixty five horsepower that's not what this one has. Then you move into this 900 series of engines. So the 900 Ace is 95 horsepower, quite a big drop down. Then you can move up to Ace Turbo, which is 130, and the Turbo R, which has the intercooler, it's 180 horsepower. So this is the most horsepower, but that 165 horsepower on the two-stroke, that's also a much lighter engine. So some of you may prefer the performance characteristics of this. Another important thing to remember is that they all take premium fuel, 91 octane, except for the base 900, the one that makes 95 horsepower. You can get away with running that on 87 octane pump gas, just regular, you know, regular gas like you would put in your car. So there are some changes here and differences. To me, I think this one is the engine that a lot of people are gonna want. I think that four-stroke has some benefits for torque and everything else, but again, up to you what we decide. And if you wanna know more about engines and that kind of thing, let me know and we'll talk about that in a future video. Now let's go with a few more, let's get going with a few more specs on this that really make it kind of adventure-like. So if we're gonna go down the road of comparing this to like an adventure motorcycle, let's just talk about comfort because no matter what the features are, if you're not comfortable on this, then it really doesn't matter. Overall, I can tell you that the seating position is really good here. You've got a lot of place to move your feet. You sit nice and tall, your legs are square. I'm about six feet tall, so you can sort of judge on how you would look on this if you were my size, shorter or taller. And then there's a lot of functions in here. Basic things like heated grips, you can plug in your heated visor to your helmet. There's even a little storage space out in front of me where I can put my phone in there and that becomes a heated place for my phone. And of course you can Bluetooth your phone through to the dash here and to a Bluetooth communicator in your helmet if you have that set up so you don't lose that functionality. And that just allows you to go out all day 
but still be in connection with the people that you need to, to reach out to. And then if we talk about the rear seat, you can see, first of all, I've got a ton of space to move around up here. Like again, compared to a motorcycle, so much more space, so much more cushy seat. This is just much more of a luxurious ride. It's kind of like a gold wing, but even better than that to me. Then you step back here, your passenger, how are they going to fit? Well, again, it's the same flo floorboards here on like a motorcycle. So you got lots of space to move around, which is going to give you space, of course, for your boots and that kind of thing. This one does have heated grips here for the passenger as well. And then you've got these shields in front. These shields are great because not only they keep the wind off you and the snow off you, but also any debris that might come around if you're going through tight trails, you've got sticks and other kind of things. So you've got some protection. You can see they're fairly flexible. They're almost rubbery and feel more than plasticky. And then again, those nice uh, heated grips. Back here, again, a lot of space, good comfort. You've got that backrest here. You could sit here all day long. And again, that's kind of what this is about, but this isn't really the Grand Touring model. There's an other model for that. This is all about adventure and utility. So let's take a look at what we've got behind me as well. So whether you're riding something in the summer or you're riding something in the winter, you're going to need utility if it's going to be a true adventure type vehicle. And this thing is awesome for that. Of course, in the winter, you're gonna to wanna to take a lot of stuff with you, sometimes more bulky clothes, that kind of thing. And this thing's utility is fantastic. So like I said, we've got that passenger seat here, but you've also got the ability to flip up this passenger seat, which if I pull up on this uh, like this with a little bit of force like that, it tips over. You can also take it right off by tipping the other side out. And then you've got, again, a tight fit here for an under seat storage piece right there. We'll take a closer look at this in a second. So we'll leave that seat flipped up. But then you've also got the ability to take a whole lot of stuff here. And what's cool about all of the K&M type stuff is you've got accessories to really customize this thing any way you want. So if you need to take a lot of stuff with you, this is just standard equipment. This comes equipped there. It's got a you know weather resistant seal. You've got some straps here to sort of adjust different things. You can put an ax down on the side. It's got little tie downs there, but you've got a lot of storage inside this. But if you don't want this enclosed container, you just need sort of that open bed kind of feel of this. You can take this off. You can put other accessories on there, or you can just leave it blank and strap things down to this rail over here. Now, if you're going to be taking a lot of weight with passengers and with uh, um, with gear, one thing that's cool about this is there are five different levels to the air suspension down here to allow it to avoid squatting and to give you the ride that you kind of want. We're going to show you those when we get to the digital LCD dash. That's pretty cool in there, but that also allows you to take a trailer, uh, you know, to skid to tow behind there. So the problem when you have a lot of weight on your hitch here is you can lift your skis up front. So having that suspension that can control that compression, but also having this rear piece here, you can design it to float, like, or it can be set up to float like it is, or you can lock it down. Once it's locked down, it gives you a little bit longer tread staying locked to the ground, and it's gonna keep that, the front um, of the vehicle, the front of the skidoo, locked in the ground. So you still got that steering component, even if you've got a little bit of weight in the hitch. The design of this thing is actually incredible. And again, for my first snowmobile review, I've been really excited to show you this because it's just so well thought out in all of its little features. So let's take a look closer at some of the storage components here and then we'll work our way to the dash. So what you're looking at right now is the under seat storage for that rear seat. So again, pretty good storage in here, not massive. You've got a little bit of a battery access right there. So if you had to plug in a tender or something like that, you could just sort of do that off there. But again, a little bit of a rubber gasket seal here. So weather resistant there. And that plugs in like this with a firm seal. And as you saw, when I tried to open this, this is a metal clip here. So that is also a firm sealer. I don't know if you can see it on the camera there. Let's just uh, pull back for a second so you can see how I seal that up with that uh, metal seal down there. You know what, I'm gonna zoom right in so you can get a good look at it. Again, you have to sort of be forceful with these. You're not gonna hurt it or anything like that, but you can just push that in there, nice loud clamp there, and that is nicely locked in place so that your passenger seat is fully secure and locked in. And then you have this extra container back here. Like I said, you could fit an ax or another accessory there. Same thing, actually it says a saw right here, sort of shown in the uh, graphic there, an ax on the other side. Uh, so it's all set up to take a few accessories on the outside with these loops, but just let's take a look inside for one second as well. So taking a look inside, it's hard to show size overall, but this is my iPad mini. You can sort of see there, uh, you know, there's just a lot of space in there. It really is carved out well. Uh, you've got some tr grooves in the bottom there. So if you do get some snow in there, your stuff's not sitting in the wet. It's, you know, sitting on the grooves above that. Uh, just so much space to put in here. And again, the same thing you'll see over here. You've got a little bit of a rubber gasket here. So you've got really good, uh, you know, weather resistance at least. Uh, so you can go anywhere and do anything. Let's take a look at the back of the sled for just one second before we move over to the dash and talk about some of the features there. 
So take a look at the back of the sled here. Let's just zoom in for a second. You can see you have got those bright LED brake lights. Now we're gonna talk about lighting in just a second here, but you can also see that hitch in there. So more of that traditional style hitch that you can uh, lock accessories on. Again, this is all about versatility. So whether you're going out to take firewood out of the forest or whatever you need to do, you've got so much versatility to take yourself and a guest out there. Now again, let's talk about those LED lights as we look at the front side as well. So as we take a look at the front side here, you can see the traditional halogen headlight. Of course, halogen headlight over LED because they create heat. The front side is likely to take some snow on. You're gonna need this for visibility. And of course that will melt the snow. Backside LED, LEDs are really popular in cars and everything else because they are low power usage, uh, but they're super bright. But again, they could possibly get covered in snow. Out front, you can't have that. While we're looking out front here, there's a couple things I wanna show you. Let's first look up here at the windshield. Hard to see on camera, hard to sort of differentiate from the background. You've got your sort of, your mirrors built in here, your rear mirrors we'll talk about them in a second but a big big windshield that's going to keep the wind off you it's going to keep the debris off you uh, nice and thick and uh, just you know something that's really nice to have for you know that expedition type touring which is again this is an expedition model taking a look straight down from there you can see the suspension here nice quality suspension we're going to talk about suspension on uh, these can-am or skidoo units in the future so we're going to leave that a little bit for another uh, video but there are some unique features in here like a foothold over here on this piece here we'll just uh, zoom into that you can see how that sort of has a tread there. Uh, we'll talk about why that has a tread versus others. And then as we go back to sort of the standard angle, actually, let's just go fully wide angle. Wide angle skews the view, but one thing I will point out is this does have extra wide um, skis out front compared to some of the other units. Let's talk about what this unit is really designed to do. So just like an adventure motorcycle is designed to do two things at once, be an on and off-road machine, a touring machine, and you know, off-road capable, this is very similar. This is the type of unit that you can take on the groomed trails or off the groomed trails. But just like an adventure bike, it's a bit of a compromise each way. So if you're looking for a unit that just does everything and does everything very well, this is probably the top of the line version of that type of unit. If you want, know you wanna go into the you know, the powder away from the groomed trails most often, you can step up in having a longer uh, and wider, basically a bigger track that's gonna allow more flotation. Or if you know you're gonna stay purely on the trails then you can have a little bit slight, uh, smaller track, it's gonna give you a little bit more maneuverability, a little more sporty type uh, ride and a little bit less flotation. So you've got options, but what's cool about this is it's that sweet spot that balances everything. And for most riders, this is the type of thing that's gonna fit your riding style no matter what you're doing. So now let's you bring, it, bring you in closer. We're gonna talk about some of the controls over here. Uh, this is pretty cool as well. You can have a real adjustable uh, setup here to your steering. So we're gonna show you that up close and then we're gonna move through this LCD display and some of the controls for that. Let's take you inside. So kind of a busy shot here with all sort of black on black on black, but you can see again, this is super easy to adjust that. It's great to fit different riders, but it's also great for the type of riding you're doing, the comfort you're doing. You can put that anywhere you want. It's very easy to do even with gloves on. And again, easy to move matters when your hands are getting cold. Speaking of hands getting cold, you've got your heated grips here. And speaking of the grips here, you can see the throttle over here. I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but you know, I'll talk about it right now. It's got a cable here, but you have drive modes down here. You have sort of a sport mode and an eco mode. Anything with drive modes, traditionally Traditionally now is going to be a drive by wire throttle. So why do you have a cable? Well, what's cool about this is it gives you that cable feel by literally connecting a cable up to have that cable feel, but it's still an electronic throttle. So that's an electronic throttle that gives you the drive modes and the really precise control, which is sort of the best of both worlds, but it still gives you that cable feel, which is again, just that right feel with the right control. I really like that. We're gonna show you some controls over here. You can see the 91 octane again on this engine, 91, basically three of the four engines are gonna be 91 octane. That base 900 ACE is going to allow you to do 87 octane, but it's only gonna give you that 85 or so horsepower, uh, whereas this one's almost 100, 100 uh, horsepower more. So a lot more power on this particular model. Let's zoom into a couple other controls here. So taking a look at the gear shift here, pretty basic stuff. You've got a high, a neutral, and a low. Again, that low range gearing, a lot like a low range Jeep or a low range off-road vehicle. It's just gonna give you that little extra torque. Again, this is about the expedition model. Whether you're towing something, whether you're in a situation where you just need that little extra grunt, you've got that. Now, the other thing that's cool about this is it does have a reverse mode. We're gonna show you how that works as we get to the next controls in a second here, uh, but you are able to throw this in reverse uh, through a different uh, switch, and we'll show you that as we move over to the handlebars right now. 
So taking a look at the left side controls here, it's again a busy shot, it's going to show you quite a bit, but there's a lot to show you here. You've got the parking brake just up top right there. This is for your Bluetooth control. This is sort of your hang up and uh, pick up switch for your Bluetooth phone. Again, once you have your phone paired, just in front of us there is a spot where you can put it in a heated area, which is super cool. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but that again, Bluetooth to your headset, and you've got the ability to take your phone calls through there. Heated grips over here, and you've got your uh, heated throttle over there, so that uh, throttle fob lever there. This is your start button and your reverse button. So uh, again, if you want to throw that into reverse, that's what actuates the electronic controller to throw it in reverse, which makes it simple. And then of course your headlight switch down there. There's some more controls. You may not be able to see them here buried just underneath here. Let me show you a different angle to show you them as well. So basically just below your left side handlebar is this control here. And you can kind of get a sense of the size of it. Large buttons, which again, you're operating this completely under gloves. This is your main controller for your digital dash, which we'll just show you in a second here. Now just beyond that over here, the top of your screen is your drive mode. So again, sport mode, eco mode right there. But you've got a lot of those controls built into here. So this is a good system to essentially give you a digital dash, a lot like a modern vehicle. But of course you can't have a touch screen on this. So it gives you a bit of a joystick type control where you can select and press and each of these buttons have a sort of a select to press as well. So there's what the, you're going to see in the controller for what I'm going to, I'm going to use this to control the dash, which we'll show you right now. So I'm going to try to put you in the driver's seat here or in the rider's spot here to give you a sense of what you're looking at. Again, you can see the mirrors, they're well clear of me, so no elbows in the shots there, uh, which is kind of nice. You can, of course, adjust them. You can see that LCD display right there. One thing I just want to show you as well is if you push this open, there's your heated cell phone spot there. So you've got that space right there to put that in. Now we are in a wide angle view, so everything's kind of a little bit skewed, but you kind of get a sense of your positioning here. Let's just zoom in a little bit to the dash here. Now again, anytime you film a screen with a camera, you don't have the Best view. You're going to see some glare that you don't normally see in person because you've got one eye on the camera and two eyes that normally help diffuse this. So again, sometimes it also has trouble focusing. I can tell you that this is a very clear crisp display. It's going to be easily daylight readable. I can tell that. But again, just because I am filming inside, uh, there's going to be some reflection in here. You can see me talking there, which is, trust me, a little embarrassing. I don't want to see that as well. So again, what I'm doing is I'm using, let's just go a little bit wider angle. I'm using this controller down here, which I'm just going to move the steering out of the way uh, to allow me to uh, control that dash and one of the cool things I want to show you is just the ability to adjust that suspension so we're gonna sort of tap into the controls here right here you can see I've got actually before we go to the suspension we'll just uh, go to the right side here here's your stats and trip thing we can go through this in another video so if you want to see more information about this digital display again camera's having trouble focusing on it but it's all clear there um, settings in there you've got your Bluetooth your display settings your units which is of course metric right here language so all kinds of things in here there's your phone uh, connections and then of course your, um, you know, sort of your Bluetooth, everything connection. So there is that there, but there's also some other things I wanna show you. Let me just kind of find a better angle here. We're gonna talk about the suspension adjustments. So the suspension adjustment, first of all, I wanna show this sort of lit up there. So you've got that go or the orange kind of uh, setting underneath that, that gives you an ability to see this even in low light conditions. But to change your suspension settings, you're gonna tap that button and you can see right here as we go in, there's your suspension words are set up there. And there's a little number right there flashing. It happens to be three now. Now I'm gonna turn the dial that you just saw me turning. We're gonna go one, we're, oops, we're gonna go back to suspension settings. There we go, it's in three. So we're gonna go four, five, and that five is the top and we're gonna go back down to one. So again, this is your suspension, sort of uh, air suspension adjustment there, all digitally controlled, super easy to control. And again, you can customize this dash out a little bit. Uh, let me just hit okay there. Let's just put it on three for now. You can customize this dash out by hitting some of these buttons to bring in uh, some of the extra controls and kind of customizing in by closing in controls and giving you information. One thing I will say is it doesn't seem too intuitive uh, to look at because it's not a touch screen, but every one of the menus is easily controlled. You can see if I move my joystick left, right, or that way, I've got the control. If I go to the settings button, it's gonna change my suspension. Uh, it's gonna tell me engine temperature, battery voltage, that kind of thing. And then this uh, button here, which let me just show you that button there. There we go. That button there is indicated over in the dash on the right side there. And again, that gives you a sense of what's going on. So you can use my joystick to cycle through or I can go through some of the, whoops, let me just go this way. Some of those steps, steps over there. So a lot of information here. Again, this is a whole separate video to show you. A little bit hard to film now. I haven't got the camera set up the right way, but a really nice digital display that's both easy to read and gives you a lot of information.
So let's talk about who this Skidoo is for. This one is for a couple different types of people. I think it's for people who don't know the type of riding they wanna do and people who know exactly the type of riding they do. And what I mean by that is if you don't know the type of riding you should do, you wanna do, this is the type of unit you can get. Now again, this is the top of the line with the, you know, the, the top engine, that kind of thing. You can spec this down a little bit, get a lower engine trim, or you know, you can look at other models in the lineup, but this one gives you the ability to go both off trail and on trail and do both things fairly well. But like an adventure bike, there's a little bit of compromise in there. To me, this is a very luxurious unit uh, that makes it very comfortable no matter what you're doing. Tomorrow, we're gonna come back and look at one that's more of a gold wing or touring unit, more so than an adventure bike type unit. So it's gonna give you a better trail performance. And we're gonna talk about some of the differences in that one over this, but to me, this is probably what I would want to buy. It gives you the versatility to do whatever you want to do. Again, huge capacity here, uh, great features for that kind of thing, but really gives you the ability to go on trail, off rail, take a friend, uh, take your gear, you know, do some workout on the trail. Like I said, you can carry back all those uh, logs for firewood. Whatever you want to do on a snowmobile, this one's pretty much going to allow you to do it. And it's got great performance with this engine. So that's really what this one is aimed at. But there's a whole lot more to show you, not just from this dealer, but from all kinds of dealers. We're going to show you more and more. One thing I do want to say is the dealership here, uh, Extreme Torque Motorsports in Fredericton, New Brunswick, they know more about these things than I will ever know. And if you want to come in and talk about snowmobiles, that's the best way to really understand these. You can't just kind of choose one online, you know, as great as Can-Am does with their websites. It really just gives you an overview. It's coming in and talking to experts that you really learn about it. And I'm not an expert on this. So you guys probably know things that uh, I didn't point out. If there's something that you think I should point out in this review or future reviews, I can come back to this because Extreme Torque Motorsports here in Fredericton and across the province, they've got two other stores across the province, they give me complete access to their entire vehicle lineup and my goal here is to make videos that give you a video database of everything you could want to know about these so again these and more are coming up tomorrow we're going to take a look at a grand touring model that's going to give you a whole different uh, perspective on a different type of riding again so do me a favor if you like what we're doing subscribe to this video and uh, again let me know if we need to be doing more snowmobiles and the best way to do that is just to help this video succeed. So I wanna thank everyone for watching. And again, if you're in Fredericton, New Brunswick, swing by Extreme Torque Motorsports to check out all the Can-Am product. We'll talk to you in the next one.